All right, everyone, it's officially 1117, which has become the time that I always start our AMA. So welcome to our latest uh, AMA session. Um, this week, we are super excited to be talking about uh, the topic of decentralized deployment. So the premise of this, if you haven't checked out the, in the event invite, is basically with the rapid acceleration of tools, platforms, etc., designed to empower metaverse creators uh, in developing games and Web3 experiences for the open metaverse. We're actually quickly entering a world where almost anyone can become a studio or or metaverse creator, or at least, you know, that's the sort of world we're pushing toward with Lamina One. That means, interestingly, an increasing departure from your sort of traditional funding or production schemes that have dominated the Web2 world we're familiar with and the gaming industry as a whole. Um, and so today we're joined by uh, Lamina One Early Access members Renza. So they are a unified platform for video game development, distribution, and crowdfunding focused on empowering user-generated content in the open metaverse. Basically, Renza allows builders to self-publish games, crowdsource their development, set terms, and get paid directly using blockchain as a basis. So today, we really wanted to dive deep into the game, into the world of game jams, self-publishing, distributed payment systems, and basically, you know, with Web3 and blockchain sort of like bringing these tools to creators, you know, what is the path for self-distributing an open metaverse experience like? Um, and this is sort of rounding out the other two gaming-related um, AMAs that we've had, one on game design, one on game development. And this is basically the third part. All right, once you've designed and developed a game, how do you get the word out, of, out about it? And like, how do you get people to actually play your experience? So um, I'm gonna open up the floor to our partners at Renza just to give you a little bit more info about who they are and what they do. Just dropped a link into um, their website. But yeah, we're super excited to have them and welcome. Welcome. Well, thank you for having us. You've got Anthony Apollo here, one of the co-founders and CEO of Renza. I am joined today by Frank, Nick, and Alex as well from our team. And we are very excited to be part of the Early Access program. I'm excited to share more with you. Awesome. So yeah, Anthony, I guess to kick things off, just would you mind telling us just a little bit about the platform you guys are building and, and why we've brought you on here today? Absolutely. And uh, thank you for queuing us up so well. Um, as Ivy mentioned, you know, we are a unified platform for video game development, distribution, and crowdfunding, um, which is kind of the, the big picture of everything. But really at its core, we're trying to create a uniform layer for financial and reputational recognition of user-generated content using blockchain as the mechanism for that. So going across these different pillars, distribution, development, and crowdfunding, what do each of those look like when you are using a blockchain for better attribution and whatnot? So for distribution, uh, which is the demo we'll be sharing with you today, that's where any kind of content creator, and yes, we are focused on games that's kind of near and dear to our hearts, but it can be really for any kind of digital media. What we allow our users to do is come to our platform, create what's called a studio, simply our convention for registering yourself as an individual or a team on the platform of creators, upload your content, whether that's a game, whether that's a piece of a game, like a 3D object or a 2D sprite sheet, music, comic books, movies, what have you. Uh, we allow you to upload that to our platform, list the public address of any of your co-creators or collaborators, and then assign each of them a you know, revenue share, royalty, or even a dividend if someone invested in that piece of content um, that will be distributed to those wallets in real time, directly, and transparently every time that piece of content sells. Uh, I know that's already kind of a lot of moving parts, but that's why we're very excited to be able to demonstrate all that to you in just a little bit. That's the distribution side of things. In terms of game yeah. development, yep, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I, I wanted to actually ask, like, before we get too much into, like, the tech side of stuff, I wanted to just kind of level set quickly and say, okay, sure. okay so we're entering this world of um, decentralized distribution. Um, and I know game jams are kind of, like, a big part of the Renza platform and, like, kind of, like, a big part of what you're building. So for people who aren't familiar, like, what is a game jam and how does that kind of fit into this conversation today? 
Yeah, and that's an excellent segue into the development side of things, right? So the best way to think about a game jam is very similar to the way you think about a hackathon, right? It's a team, or it's an individual or a team comes together to build a, you know, uh, an app, a game, a product, uh, a very high level one uh, in a very small amount of time um, just to kind of put out a minimum viable product and see how far you get and what you can do with the tools and the talent that you have kind of yourself or, or in, within your group. Um, so in terms of what we've done at Rensa, we've created a product called Showcase. Uh, Showcase is our on-chain platform or feature for creating any kind of game jam, hackathon, even a pitch competition or a film fest and doing that all on chain, which again is, is very abstract. Just to dig in a little bit on what that looks like. Um, if there is an entity hosting a game jam, um, and this does happen with some of the blockchain platforms, it happens plenty with the larger video game producers and developers. What they do is they put some kind of prize on the line, uh, typically money or um, you know, it could be tickets to an event or access to a program or platform something will be on the line. And then there will be a prompt given to the participants to you know, build a game around, you know, let's call it like a, a seven day first person shooter uh, prompt. You have seven days to build the best FPS you can. And actually that's how the game Super Hot was uh, initially developed back almost 10 years ago. Um, then your team comes together, you build the thing, you upload it, and then there'll be judges that kind of opine on who has created the best piece of work in that very tight time frame. So what we do by putting it all on chain is any kind of prize that is put forward by a sponsor uh, will be sent to an escrow smart contract that lives on chain. So everyone can see the pool of funding. Everyone can see it totally transparent, totally public, but no one can touch it, right? And, and that seems like a fairly obvious uh, thing to do and say no one can touch it until the funds are distributed at the end of the competition, but there's no shortage of people and stories of who've gotten stiffed during those those competitions, including ourselves. So first thing is funds are locked up. Then teams register through our platform on chain. Uh, they submit their content on chain, very similar to the game upload flow we're gonna demonstrate in a few minutes. Uh, judges are registered on chain, they vote on chain. So you know there's no you know, behind the scenes activity there of who's judging what. And, and we, we avoid all that opacity by putting it on a public ledger. Uh, and then when the votes are all in from the judges on the content that's been submitted by the builders, all the funds will be automatically distributed through our platform, right? So if first place gets 50%, second gets third, third gets 20. Um, and if there's teams that would take any of those prizes uh, and split them up between the team members, we will do all that automatically and transparently with our smart contracts in real time. Because a lot of times with these competitions, People don't get paid, they get paid on a three month lag. Um, all the funding doesn't come in. And we think that's a pretty silly way to do things when we have such great technology in front of us that makes this stuff transparent. Definitely, and I mean, so we're partners with Renza. Um, you guys are members of our early access program. And I mean, when we first partnered, you took us through a demo of the platform and we got super excited. Obviously, this aligns super well with the Lamina One mission to, you know, empower creators to create experiences easily, to get paid directly for their experiences. And it really like opens up like a really big world for our creators and for people who will ultimately be like creating experiences on Lamina One. Um, and so I think. Um, before we dive into questions, I know you guys wanted to just kind of like dive in and show the community, you know, what Renza is, how easy it is to get started on the platform. So, yeah, if you want to sort of kick off the demo and then after that, we're going to hop into questions. But I think just seeing the platform in general is like a really great way to kick this off. Sure. Two things to quickly put a bow on with Game Jams before we head over to the demo. Um, one is, you know, I talked about there being you know, some kind of financial prize on the line, which is great, um, but it doesn't have to be, right? There could just be a, a token in there representing an NFT that represents someone's placement in the challenge. And that's a great way to kind of build up what I would call almost like a resume of accomplishments that you've, that you've completed um, as you participated in these game jams. And the second thing is uh, the game jam demo, uh, it does take a while to get through. There's a lot of moving pieces to it. So uh, that is not what we'll be showing today. We'll be showing kind of the, the pieces that kind of lead up to that with game and asset upload and, and we call it the publish purchase play flow. We'll get into that. Um, but if the group here is interested in seeing a demo of the game jam platform, again, we call that showcase, 
please do feel free to drop me a line. We can figure out, you know, kind of offline what that looks like to share that as well. So with that all being said, I'm going to head over to our demo now. Um, you'll see we are on staging.rented.games because we are going to use some, some test ETH, so we're not spending a ton of money to get this all done. Um, but rented.app is our production website. Please do head there. And if you are a creator, please do not hesitate to reach out to us if you'd like to host our, your content with us. Um, and you'll see what that looks like as we go through it. So of course we got our landing page here, but the meat of it is gonna be across uh, our games marketplace, our media marketplace, and then studios, which again is the convention we use for uploading the content. The first thing I'm gonna do is connect my wallet, right? So there's no emails and passwords as of right now. Um, I will simply hit connect and connect the MetaMask, which I am logged into up here. Again, this is on the Gorley testnet of Ethereum. Uh, and I am connected, right? That's how we identify people on our platform using the zero X addresses, less so than, you know, your personal information. So if I was to go to our games marketplace quickly to show you what it looks like, um, that will load up. And this is essentially like the web three version of a steam or an Epic game store, right? There's, these are a couple of demo games we've made. If you remember the WarioWare series, these are kind of like WarioWare themed crypto themed warrior wear type mini games but there's a few here um, that will go ahead and we can upload one purchase it and play it we'll go to the media tab and this is where our different assets live um, we've got a couple things here there's music here there's you know 2d sprite sheets there's 3d objects there's a bunch of different stuff here so that again we you know there's some film here as well Again, this is all demo stuff, but we, all of this to say, we can accommodate quite a bit of uh, content in terms of the type of content. Um, showcase, again, we'll skip over for today, but when I head over to studios, this is going to be the mechanism by which we start uploading content. So I've already created one. This is the Lamina One with one in uh, air quotes that you can't see. Um, and this will allow me to perform several actions, right? Create a studio if I want to create another one. Uh, publish a game, publish an asset, or organize a showcase. For today, uh, it's going to be just me as the admin over here. If I wanted to add some members to my team, I could certainly do that here. I will quickly, to kind of keep things moving, go over to Actions and Publish a Game. And this will take me through the flow to upload a game, publish it, assign the you know, co-creators, and then we'll go into the, the purchasing and playing process. So I'll click Publish a Game. And we have a pretty speedy intake form here. So the first thing I do is I will go ahead and upload this little game package we have. This one's called Block Exploder. I will give it some cover art, which will be here. So we block exploder. I could always be cheeky with the L1 there. Love it. <laughs> Um, this is going to be run, grab, smash, duck, a little bit of an infinite runner there. Um, we assign genres and categories to all the content we upload. I'll, I'll pause here for just a second to say, you know, we don't, in the, the way that these platforms currently work, this information is very opaque. It's hard to find out what games are selling, how much across, which genre, which category. You can kind of extrapolate with some information that you can get off of Steam and, and some other platforms, but typically it's very difficult. We collect all this information um, and post it to IPFS or other decentralized storage so that everyone can get an idea of like what's hot when, or conversely, where no one's built uh, a type of game, right? Has anyone built a horror racing game, for example? Um, but this one will be a platformer. So I'll click that, and then I could add some tags. This will be an infinite runner with 2D graphics and pixel art. And again, that's all uh, information that we will be uh, kind of hosting in a decentralized manner so everyone can see it. We have our own little rating system. We'll call this E for everybody. Uh, and then we have a license count. So what we're doing to be uh, very specific, I'll get, I'll get a little bit more into this when we actually do the upload process because it takes a few seconds to, to store this and, and mint the tokens. What this is, is we are creating the number of games that will live in our marketplace um, because the games that we are uploading, the content that we're uploading is backed by what we call a license token. It's a token that represents the legal license to own the game, share the game, sell the game, uh, and then we associate all of the, the royalties or payouts with that. So if you are a creator and you want this to be a scarce item and it to be one of one, sure, we can make this one. Or I could click a, a max and it's you know one billion. 
Um, for now, let's stick with 400 for some reason. Uh, I'll click next, and then what I'm gonna do quickly here, um, this is a little bit of a hand wave, I'm going to upload a GLTF file, which is going to be our game cartridge, right? Because the idea that I just said a moment ago, where a game license token is kind of this amorphous concept, it's this thing that lives in your wallet, well, we wanted to have a, a nice, fun, visual analog for that. So I will grab our GLTF file here and upload that. Um, in the future, we were, are looking forward to having our developers actually kind of design their own cartridges in here, and we'll kind of keep adding this as we go. There's also an interesting way for us to do a bit of like a loyalty program that you unlock more features for your cart based on how many games you're uploading to our platform, but that's all kind of day two stuff. So I'll just click to the rest of this, and then this is kind of where the meat is, right? So this is the screen on which the creator of the content can actually list their price and then how much of each sale they want to distribute to their team. So to keep the numbers easy, we'll make this game cost one ETH. Uh, price does not get oracleized on our staging site, but on our prod site it does. This would be about $2,000 because ETH is up. Uh, and you'll see that there's a couple of wallets already connected. One is the Rents a Game wallet that is uh, allocated 10%. That is how we keep the lights on. We take 10% of every transaction. Uh, as a fee, and that number can kind of oscillate in either way, depending on who we're working with and uh, how things shape out over time. The connected wallet that we automatically allocate 90% to, that is my wallet here that I'm connected with as we speak, ending in C5, D9. Uh, so that's a connected wallet. But what I want to do is add some of my contributors to this, you know, this game. So we'll click Add Contributor. I'll quickly go over to MetaMask so I don't lose my place on, uh, on Chrome here. I'll grab uh, the public address of Viola, the voice actress, right? Let's say this game had some really tremendous voice acting. So we are going to put her down for 20% of the uh, you know, purchase price of sale, right? She got 20% of each transaction. If I go to the next person in this kind of role, let's say it's Mike, the musician. Uh, he did some of the backing tracks for us. He'll get 5%. And then Alex, the engineer, Let's just say Alex did some of the you know, touch-ups at the end when we were going to, right before we published this thing. So they'll, they'll get uh, 0.01%. Again, what we're just trying to demonstrate here is that we can go pretty granular in terms of things like microtransactions. Um, so I'll quickly hit publish. And this will do two things now that all these are allocated. Um, one is we save all these files to our backend. Two is we post that information as relevant to IPFS. And then three, we mint two different types of tokens. Again, I'll kind of go into depth here as this is spinning. One token that we're minting is called the game owner token. We mint one of those, and that will be automatically deposited in the connected wallet. And that will kind of mark that person, that creator, as the generator of this piece of content, and it will also enable them to do certain things like airdrops with it uh, down the road. The second thing we're doing is we are minting game license tokens. Those 400 tokens we specified, those are going to go live in our games marketplace. So once this transaction is done, which it already is, um, we'll let this spin for a second and we'll check the block explorer in a moment. Um, once this is done, it's uploaded, the tokens are minted, we can go back to games and we should see block exploder there in just a moment. Um, so yeah, when I scroll down here, we've got Block Exploder, and now we're off the kind of from the games marketplace to our games detail page. You can see that we just uploaded this. So we have the title, the description, the studio that created it. Uh, we see that there's 400 licenses. We see those tags. We can play around with our GLTF cartridge here. Um, and then what I could do here is buy with crypto. A EULA pops up, uh, so essentially the legalese. We have our own as kind of like a boilerplate, but what we can do with clients or you know, larger studios, we can accommodate their EULAs as well. So there may be different ways to handle different token types that are uh, desired by our partners. So what I'm doing is I'm purchasing this game license token now, and that'll do two things. One is that'll effectuate the royalty split that we've already designed. And then secondly, it's gonna let me play this game in browser. So this will just take a moment to spin on Gorly and then we will be off to the races. You'll also notice when this happens that the number of license tokens will decrement by one as well. So instead of having 400, there'll be 399 left. Again, if you've got 100 of these, then that might be a big deal. Um, if you've got two, then 
you know, or, or, or you know, a billion, maybe it's not. But anyway, so this transaction is now done. I'll refresh this so that I can play the game. But even before I get that done, I do wanna quickly go to the block explorer, right? So if you are kind of new to blockchain, the block explorer is how you see all the activity that's actually happening on a chain in real time. So what you'll see here is that this from field, that's the wallet C5 D9 that I'm connected with right now. It interacted with the rent game smart contract, took in that one ETH purchase price and split all those payments up automatically. So if you know the voice actress got her 20%, that's 0.2 ETH. Rensa, we got our 10%, that's the 0.1 ETH. And everybody else in that flow was also paid from our smart contract in real time. Uh, and I do want to reiterate, we are doing this as a demo on, on Gorly as testnet for demonstration purposes, but this is all live, uh, deployed on Ethereum and Polygon, and we cannot wait until we are able to deploy this on Lamina 1 in the very near future. So quickly hopping back over to the Rensa page, I'll click play game. Uh, the first thing to do is check for token ownership. In that capacity, this is very lightweight digital rights management, right? No de nouveau or Vanguard software being installed into the rootkit of your computer. You just, we simply just do a token check. If you have the token in your digital wallet, you can play, you can launch and play the game. If you don't, you can't. It's that straightforward. Uh, and as you can see, this is just a little you know, pixelated mini game, but we can host any number of different types of games here. We could do 3D for sure. As long as you export to HTML, you are good to go. Um, so that is the game flow I wanted to share. And then very quickly, because I don't want to take up too much time, and I'm sure I already have, um, I quickly want to just hop over to media and I'm going to quickly just purchase one of these uh, music albums we have because while we are Rensa Games and we are very proud of that, um, we do want to make sure we can accommodate any number of different types of content creators along the way. So I am just very quickly right now going through an analogous process to buy this music album from my friend Doug in Japan. Um, there's a thousand copies of this one. It's got its own categories. It's got its own tags. It's a teen rating. I guess there's a little bit of profanity in there perhaps, but uh, very similar situation. Once I purchase this asset license token, completely just parallel infrastructure to what we have for games, uh, instead of being able to play a game, I'll be able to launch this album in what we call the sound bank, where I can make a playlist based on which tokens I own that represent different pieces of music. So um, again, let's take just a second to spin and get that done. And I'll show you how that works for music. You'll be able to hear it because if I rip my headphones out, then I mute myself and that's a whole big problem. But um, you know, our CTO Alex, who's on this call, has built some incredible functionality into this already. Anything you want to do in like a Spotify or an iTunes, you know, skipping music, making tracks, all of that, that's all already pretty much here. Um, and the last thing I'll note is, again, this is music. That's great. Again, we see that real-time payment flow. Congratulations to everybody who contributed this album, just got paid within 60 seconds, not two months. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll play this. But we could do the same thing with, let's say, music or a comic book e-reader, right? So there's uh, really no shortage of different assets we can you know, host on the platform um, and let people publish. And I think that is uh, pretty damn impactful for any creators on the call right now. I'm sure there are plenty. You know, there's no shortage of horror stories of people who don't get paid or get paid on a two month time lag or need to get past some arbitrary financial threshold to you know, actually receive a check um, or when that check comes in, you just split it up manually amongst all your team. And then there's a lot of questions about accounting. We, we solve all those problems from day one. And that's where we are. And now with that being said, I think I've been talking for probably about 20 minutes of a 15 minute demo by my estimate. So I'm going to stop talking and Ivy, I'll throw it back to you. Amazing. Oh, thank you so much for that demo. I think, yeah, the chat feed's full of people who are like, oh my God, this is super exciting. And again, yeah, I've been really excited to share this with our community of creators because I know so many people are like actively making stuff right now. Um, so I will say we got over 380 questions this week for you guys uh, from our community about game jam strategies, distributed payment, uh, community-based building, you know, pros and cons. So definitely want to dive into their questions. We're also getting a bunch of questions like live in the feed that I know like Renz is kind of like answering live in real time. 
But I guess just to kind of start, um, Mafood asks, you know, game jams have become popular events for developers to create games within a short time frame. Um, in general, you know, how can participating in game jams benefit indie developers? And what are some practical tips that you guys have as, you know, a platform for setting up the kind of like framework for publishing, setting up payments um, and like kind of paying game jam participants, you know, what are your tips for making the most out of this kind of experience? Sure. So I think the, the best way I think about game jams is the ability to be a big fish in a smaller pond. Um, there are existing platforms like itch or like congregate where if you're developing independent games, you could just kind of throw them up there. Um, and maybe some people will, will take note and, or maybe they, they don't, unfortunately. Um, with game jams, I think there's a better way to kind of align yourself with you know, whoever is sponsoring the event, whether that's a blockchain company and you're doing a hackathon or whether that is an established video game publisher um, or, or better, maybe example would be uh, some of the video game engines like Epic and Unity have tremendous game jams with the global game jams with thousands and thousands of participants. Um, the ability to get your name out there through one of those is really a tremendous feather in your cap to the point where you'll probably be recruited by one of the larger studios if you're able to kind of achieve something in that setting that is uh, either you know incredibly technical um, because being able to do technical stuff in a short amount of time is, is always a good sign, but also creativity, right? Going back to the example of something like Super Hot, right? It was a first person shooter where the mechanic was about, you know, time moves only when you move. And that was a very novel concept. And the reason why I love game jams, and I'll probably speak on behalf of the team here, is because it really is an opportunity to create very experimental game loops um, without having to put millions and millions of dollars into production to kind of figure out what that looks like. And I also think I'll probably, I need to answer the second half of your question um, in terms of, you know, what it looks like to kind of incentivize community or gain the most out of the experience. You know, I think another way to think about game jams is something like early access, right? If you can catch someone's eye with something you're building uh, in a game jam, you know, it, can you convert them to a paying customer through early access? And then they could become kind of like a de facto volunteer QA tester as you put out new builds of your game. Um, there's also an opportunity to do some crowdfunding for your studio. If you are successful in a game jam, your name is out there, we'll capitalize on that momentum by perhaps raising some money for your studio um, to kind of take it to the next level and then bring in some hires and all that kind of stuff. And we haven't really talked about the crowdfunding piece of what we do at Rensa yet. Um, we'll probably hold off on that. Maybe I'll, I'll bring it up more if it comes relevant in the, the subsequent questions. But I think net net, the, the takeaway is there are now ways to have people invest in your company, your studio, your content uh, using compliant token launches. Uh, think about it like Kickstarter, but instead of just pre-sales for a thing you give someone later on, it's actual upside in the success of your product. Um, and that's gonna make everyone who's invested in you, you know, kind of like an automated evangelist to get the word out there about what you're building. Amazing. And Tara Moore kind of asks, and this might actually help you kind of like feed into what we were just talking about, but Tara Moore asks, what are the advantages of decentralized game distribution over the sort of normal studio model for games and distribution? Sure. sure. So I think, you know, even with the demo, we proved a large chunk of it, which is we've eliminated many, if not, you know, all of the hurdles with, with being, you know, financially recognized for what you're doing. Um, you know, sell something, get paid directly to your digital wallet in real time, right? There's, you know, if you're on Steam, it takes 30, 60 days to get paid. Uh, if you're doing something like the Fortnite creator, I think it takes over $3,500 before someone will cut you a check. Uh, and there's a lot of asterisks around all of that. So in terms of just like the, the payment rails, I think we solve a lot of that kind of out the gate. Um, there's also a lot to be said about things like censorship resistance uh, when it comes to selling games. If, if stuff you know, gets thrown off of one platform for you know, nebulous reasons, then you can have a home with it. Uh, I will say we are not quite OpenSea. You can't come to Rensa and just upload whatever you want. There is a process um, in which we you know, make sure that you own what you say you own before you host it. So it's not the Wild West. We, we're not looking to do that either. But I do think decentralization brings a tremendous amount of efficiency and transparency to all of the transactions that are already happening on platforms like Steam or the Epic Game Store or GOG. 
On the other side of the equation, Ray asks, what are the sort of obstacles and opportunities game developers have to overcome to use these sort of decentralized distribution models in the metaverse successfully? Um, you know, what are the challenges um, and how do you recommend people kind of like overcome them? Well, there, there is no shortage of challenges. Uh, <laughs> I'll say that for sure. You know, I think a lot of it comes with the novelty of blockchain technology. Uh, as well as the constant evolution of blockchain technology. You know, um, if I, the first thing I talked about coming to our platform is using a digital wallet, right? There's not a whole lot of those vis-a-vis -vis the number of gamers. I was to say there's, there's 3 billion people playing video games on the planet, and there's about, you know, half a million active Ethereum wallets on a daily basis, right? So those numbers are not even comparable. I think the, the main challenge is going to be continuing to put all of this blockchain stuff in the background, um, I think, you know, everyone who's working on, you know, Web3 is trying to do that in some capacity. Um, it's going to take time and it's going to take evolution across a number of different verticals, right? So while we might be able to put a bunch of tech stuff in the background, that's fine. But does being on a blockchain platform expose us to some regulatory risks as we're seeing in the U.S. right now? Um, what about the economic risks of creating these new systems that haven't really been stress tested? So everything is kind of going to be, we're still building the foundation to a certain extent. And I think, you know, we're starting to firm up those, you know, those rails, but it's going to still going to take a little bit of time to, to build up. Definitely. Um, David OX asks, how might self-publishing and decentralized game dev distribution revolutionize the gaming industry, empower indie developers, and reshape the relationship between creators and players? I, I know that this is like a super exciting facet about the sort of like crowdfunding game jam space. So I'd love for you to go into that a little bit more. Yeah, there's there's a couple things here. And I think the, the biggest trend that excites us is... and sorry to maybe some of the, the larger publishers, but we are seeing a lot of big names who've been inside the operations of the very large AAA publishers for a long time are now going solo to start their own work. And I think one of them I would point to is, let's say the Bloober team, right? I, think they, I forget who they spun out of, but um, they may have actually spun out of Konami. And now, now they're being hired to like work on the Silent Hill 2 remake. Um, so that's a, a trend of bigger names going independent because I think some of these tools, not only what we're building at, at Rensa for the payments, but also you know, the development of engines like Unreal and Unity are making things easier to create. Um, and I think we're, we're, I'm hoping, and our hypothesis is, there's gonna be a bit of a flattening of the industry where hopefully some of the power is seeded away from these tremendous incumbents that kind of control how the industry works to a more decentralized, more distributed, uh, just ecosystem of game development. And in terms of, of reshaping the relationship between creators and players, you know, again, I think, it's, I think it becomes more of almost like a peer-to-peer -peer or one-to-one -one relationship, right? If, if someone is able to build a game and host it on Rensa and someone can come along and buy it, congratulations, that's one-to-one. -one. There's no, you don't have three counterparties in the middle taking their VIG on the way between, you know, the point of hosting something and selling it. It just becomes flatter all around. I think that's the right direction to go in. Totally. Um, Iulia, our community member, pointed out, you know, game jams have been around since before, you know, the Web3 era, era. So they're sort of asking, you know, how are game jams evolving in what the Web3 era and what opportunities do they provide for builders? Sure. So there's there's an interesting nuance here, which is that a lot of the it's, it's uh, how should I phrase this nicely. So a lot of the game jams or hackathons that are currently occurring in the Web3 space. Um, aren't on a Web3 platform. They're still using the incumbents like DevPost and whatnot, and, and maybe the payouts are in some form of crypto, but there's not really a ton of functionality around game jams, hackathons, pitch competitions. That's, that's actually on-chain. As far as we know, we're, we're the first. Um, and I think that's important because while conceptually, if I could explain, if I did a decent enough job earlier on, explain what a game jam is, you can understand, okay, well, there's a prize on the line. I build a thing, I win, I get prize, cool. Uh, unfortunately, that's it's not really how it works. You know, our team, a large part of the reason why our team built Showcase was because we got screwed out of, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of pitch competitions and hackathon winnings from reputable parties, I might add. So, you know, <laughs> I, I think what we're trying to do is bring some balance back and just bring honesty and transparency into the entire, you know, kind of playground, for lack of a better term. 
Um, everyone can see what's going on in real time. And if, if you have people who are not paying your creators and you're getting free marketing and free labor and, and you're not recognizing that any you know, manner of import, then you know, our platform blows a hole in that whole scheme. And I think that's a good thing. Totally. Um, Dev Moski asks, what kind of scale of activity or event or experience are you able to organize currently on Renza? Like, uh, can you support like small to large? Like what, who, who can join you guys and start uh, organizing events or posting up experiences today? Sure. So there's really no limitation on the, let's say, the number of participants we can have in one of our you know, showcases um, for a game jam. The, what I will just drill into for a second is we're, we're not looking to like, super monetize that tool. Um, you know, if you're a college student on a Thursday night getting together with some friends and you want to kind of build some stuff over the weekend and hack away, you know, we want you to have like, a reminder of that. We're not going to charge you to use that product. Um, but if you are talking about an enterprise that wants to put, you know, tens of thousands of, or more dollars on the platform for prizes, yeah, there's, you know, we can accommodate that. Maybe we do a little bit of PM on the back, the back end of it. Um, all of it to say, it's a very scalable platform that, from the technical perspective, from like the product perspective, you know, we want this to be readily available to people who just want to use it as a learning tool. And if it becomes like a large piece of someone's marketing campaign, that might look a little different. Amazing. Yeah. And Titanovix asks, um, you know, we're, we're kind of uh, winding down to our last few minutes here. So a lot of people have actually asked, you know, how are Renza and Lamina One collaborating? You know, what will we be working on together over the coming months? Um, Why did you decide to partner with us? Yeah. So uh, we are, as I've mentioned earlier, a member of the Early Access Program, which is incredibly exciting. Um, that gives us the opportunity to kind of check out what's being built behind the scenes and stress test it before it goes live, either, let's say, on our platform or to the broader community. Um, that has been incredible to be part of that voyage. I think we're both learning a lot from each other. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff that I probably can't or shouldn't talk about, which I am excited to hopefully announce in the near future. But all of that, all of that to say, you know, I showed the demo earlier. We're using MetaMask. You know, I think most people who've been interacting with Lamina One uh, are already uh, using MetaMask for the tool or, or the, the Lamina One wallet. Um, you know, Lamina One is also EVM compatible. The demonstration we showed has our smart contracts on Ethereum and Polygon. So we're, we're pretty much, we're pretty well aligned already. Now we're excited to kind of take the next step and formalize some of that. And I'll probably leave that there. And then um, I think there was a second part of the question of, of how we got on the radar. Uh, that's a much longer story, which I'll probably uh, hand wave a bit of since we're kind of running out of time. But all I have to say is, I think we were kind of on the radar before Lamina One was Lamina One. We were talking to some of the people involved before things got formalized. and. When they did, we were incredibly excited to see it. Um, we had a chance to meet the team down in Consensus uh, in Austin in 2022. And it's, we've just kind of been along for the ride since. Amazing. Yeah. And I think um, Aim for the Moon, this is kind of a good last question for us to round out the AMA, but they're asking you guys, you know, they'd love to hear your thoughts on self-publishing games and the rise of decentralized game distribution platforms like Renza. You know, how do you guys see these trends shaping the future of the gaming industry? And, you know, what is that future that we're going to be working on towards together? Sure. So I think I alluded to this a little bit uh, a couple questions ago, talking about how some of those, you know, uh, the, you know, the larger names within the bigger publishers are starting their own studios and things are getting a little flatter. I think that's the kind of the generalized direction of where things are going. Um, to talk from a technical perspective, uh, to answer this one a little more directly, you know, I think to, to kind of correlate, you know, maybe this is a good like framing to wrap this up. You know, what we showed during our demo today was, okay, well, here's a game, here's an album, everything's finished, let's upload it and go. You know, what we're looking forward to is being able to put one of those license tokens behind really any piece of user-generated content uh, that could be uploaded to our platform and then just start building games, you know, in browser or through an app, a Rensa app um, that uses, you know, predominantly UGC, kind of like a, the way a Roblox works, but Roblox also takes 70% of what its creators earn, right? By creating these decentralized tools and keeping all these transactions peer to peer, we could really lower those costs and make it a much better creative 
you know, a fertile, fertile creative space for, you know, people, whether they are trying to put a full game together using, you know, tokenized UGC that recognizes everybody for what they've built, or on the other side of that coin, if you're someone who, you know, creates music, but, you know, and wants your music to be inside of video games, but doesn't have a mechanism to do that in the current way the industry works, you know, working as a inside one of the, the few large studios there are, well, we're going to give you an opportunity to accomplish that. So we're very excited about that direction and where we are going on that journey with Lamina One. Amazing. Thank you so much, Anthony. I hope uh, it seems like the community is super excited in the comment feeds um, and we are so, so stoked to keep building together. Also to see, you know, the types of experiences that end up on Renza and that we can kind of experiment and, and play with together. Um, just as a heads up for the community, I'm going to close out. I am dropping our secret code as we speak for attending this AMA. Um, for anyone who wants to redeem some XP on our Zealy platform, uh, just plug that in and you can get some XP. Um, as a kind of preview of what to expect that's coming. So obviously we've been doing some awesome AMAs lately. Um, we're going to continue on with uh, more partner features and highlights of things that are coming to L1, building with L1, et cetera. Um, and it's really exciting to be able to kind of show you all firsthand how the Lamina One platform is coming to life. Um, as for next week, we're going to be dropping our identity light paper for a 48 hour community preview. Um, so that's super exciting. Um, AMA next week is going to be all about metaverse identity and a bunch of the solutions that we've been looking into around, you know, how do you prove who you are and what you are own in the emerging open metaverse? Um, and that's going to be followed by a number of weeks we're going to be using to prep the community for Lamina One beta net launch, which is officially happening in July 2023. So things to look forward to on that front include quest catch ups, a couple more community benchline surveys, the public release and testing of the L1 for Unity toolkit, um, winners for end of testnet giveaway, and you've heard it here first, a new 2.0 Lamina One wallet prototype that we are in heavy testing mode with at the moment and is going to be sort of like our new onboarding flow and portal um, onto Lamina One at Betanet, which is looking really awesome so far and we are so excited to drop and release to you so in the meantime stay active on interest groups attend the amas fill out your surveys redeem your badges and catch up on as many quests as you can it's about to get really busy on here and we are so excited to you know keep engaging and rewarding the community members who've been actively engaged with us along the way so Thank you all so much, um, and we will catch you next week. And thank you so much, Renza. Um, I'm going to drop a link to their website once again um, in the channel. You can just find them on Renza.app. Um, and yeah, I mean, if anyone posts anything on Renza and wants, uh, you know, the L1 community to start playtesting it, uh, let us know. Drop it in the gaming channel. We'd love to uh, start working on stuff together. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Cheers, everybody. All right. Take care. Have a great weekend, everyone.